you too, we Word of prayer? Sure. Okay. My problem, our target is to get you all moving it.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for us. Welcome to this service of remembrance and celebration for the life of Gwyneth Sonora Morgan. Let us stand as we sing together. said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant Gwen, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson is a reading from Isaiah, chapter 11, beginning with the first verse. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance, nor make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. 
The earth shall shake at the force of his word, and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and a little <coughs> child will lead them all. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put his hand in the nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my mountain, for as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. In that day, the heir to David's throne will be a banner of salvation to all the world. The nations will rally to him, and the land where he lives will be a glorious place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Peter, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, all unkind of speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment, now that you have tasted, now that you taste of the Lord's kindness. You are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more? You are his holy priest. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices to please God. As the scripture says, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Yes, you who trust him recognize the honor God has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word. And so they meet the fate that was planned for them. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on his law day by day. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. 
Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wind. They are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is doomed.
and the Kentucky Historical Society. In 2014, her family began attending St. Peter's Anglican Church in Frankfurt, where she was baptized, received First Communion, and was spiritually and emotionally nurtured by weekly services, Sunday school, church potlucks, children's choir, and the catechesis of the Good Shepherd. In 2018, she and Lorraine became big sisters to Mary, and the family embarked on their first year of homeschooling with a classical conversations community. Gwen immediately took to this kinetic, interactive approach to learning, and eventually enrolled in grammar, history, and art classes online with Veritas Scholars Academy to supplement her home and community learning. Gwen experienced a hemorrhage in her brain in November of 2020. After emergency surgery, she was diagnosed with grade 4 glioblastoma of the thalamus, an aggressive and lethal brain tumor with genetic mutations that made it even more deadly. It repaired its own DNA to prolong the life of the cancer cells and masked its presence to the immune system by appearing benign. Gwen bravely underwent the standard care 40 days of radiation and chemotherapy at Norton's Children Hospital to be eligible for clinical trials. During this time, the family lived at the Ronald McDonald House in downtown Louisville, which enabled Gwen to participate in intensive rehabilitation therapy for mobility on the left side of her body, which had been severely impacted by the tumor hemorrhage. Both Gwen and her family prayed for miraculous healing from her brain damage and terminal cancer diagnosis. But when this did not happen, all resolved to support her living life as fully as possible. Her grandparents, along with many aunts, uncles, and cousins, and friends, made this possible and enriched her experiences, even when she had to use her wheelchair. In spring of 2021, Gwen began traveling every three weeks with her family to St. Louis Children's Hospital as part of a clinical trial. She shared many adventures at tourist attractions in Kentucky, Indiana, and Missouri along I-64, and enjoyed the many things to do in St. Louis. She experienced a tumor reoccurrence and seizure in November 2021, requiring hospitalization. Gwen let her interest in science help her become an informed young patient, and asked her caregivers to explain which part of the cancer cell would be affected by a given treatment, DNA, cell membrane, mitochondria, etc. When presented with the limited options, she chose to decline further clinical trial options based on their outcomes and the side effects, receiving palliative chemotherapy at UK Children's Hospital every three weeks. The kindness and compassion of Gwen's many medical caregivers over the course of her year and a half journey, bolstered her spirits and remained an inspiration to her family. After receiving compassionate care from Heritage Palliative and Hospice Care, Gwen died at home on the evening of July 3rd, 2022. She is survived by her mother, Heather, father, Zach, and sisters, Lorraine and Marion. Her family remains committed to sharing her story as an example of a race well run. Even though she is doing this every day. In spring 2022, just a week before her 11th birthday, Gwen Morgan became a published children's book author through a generous support of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. She wrote her first draft of Drippy, the Tale of the Sad Rain Cloud, in the summer before her diagnosis. You can help us spread her legacy and interact with her book at the website The Bulletin. Her book is also available for purchase following the service.
Are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priests. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices to please God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In the cool of the evening on July 3rd, Gwen passed peacefully into the fullness of life for which she was created ahead of us. It strikes me that Gwen has always been a little bit ahead of us, certainly ahead of me. And how ironic it is that we so often tell children to hurry up when we are the ones who are behind. In the weeks since her death, we've been given a very special gift of special time. Time that we needed to weather the waves of grief that come on their own schedule. We can't schedule them, they come when they will. Time to experience the inklings of a new reality that we have all been ushered into through Gwen's passing, and time to realize that we are all different now, individually and corporately. The world is different to us, and we see things through new lenses. Gwen's life and her illness and her death have created a new frame of reference for everything. It certainly has for me, and I suspect you feel it too. We look at everything differently now. We look at ourselves, we look at our lives, we look at other people, we look at children, we look at God differently now through the gift of Gwen's life. When we received the dreaded diagnosis, it felt like the earth shifted on its axis. Light seemed to come in at a different angle. The present was certainly changed, the future was changed, and even the past was changed, all in a moment. And so began for us 
this journey, 20 months, the last 20 months. Oh, what we've been through. Time marked by a range of thoughts and feelings, actions and reactions that baffled us at times. Those 20 months gave us plenty of time to experience it all over and over again. I believe we've come to a deeper awareness of what it means to both bear and bear with one another's burdens. Our fears, anger, despair, sadness, hope, helplessness, Memories, reflexes, we've had ample time to bear them all and to learn in the bearing. But you know, God's ministry to us through Gwen did not begin with her illness. In Zach and Heather's life, it began, I'm sure, the moment they knew that she existed. And only they can tell you all the depth of the blessings that she has brought to them in the 11 years of her life with them. From the moment that Gwen arrived at St. Peter's, she began enriching and leavening our life together as a parish. It's all so much clearer now, but even then, we felt it. Gwen was always a catalyst for our growth And you know what catalysts do. Catalysts are usually very small parts of any reaction. But because they are there, they make bigger things happen than could otherwise happen. And that was Gwen. She moved among us as a catalytic presence. And as she immersed herself in the sacramental life of our parish through baptism, communion, her ongoing catechesis, We were the ones who were being blessed. And blessed we are to have had her with us during those wonderful days. We were all amazed at her her Bible knowledge. How many times have I heard people comment, wow, her theological insight. And of course, these are tributes to the way she was raised, the way she was taught, the home environment in which she had the privilege to grow. As her Sunday school teacher, I had the privilege of seeing how often she got the right answer (laughs) and baffled some of the boys. How'd she know that? (laughs) But Gwen didn't only know the right answer, she knew the right questions. And that's even deeper and sometimes more problematic. And she wasn't afraid to ask them of herself or her teachers or anyone who she had time to talk with. Gwen had a rich imagination. She had the ability to find God in all kinds of places, in literature, in art, in nature, and in the stirrings of her own little soul. No, not little soul, big soul. She heard the still small voice, seems like all the time. Gwen knew how to, she had a great imagination and she could be satisfied with simple things, simple toys, simple activities, just being outside. The joy of a baby duck that you see in the picture on the cover of the bulletin. Gwen also knew how to suffer Bravely, most of the time, honestly, always. Our patron saint at our parish, Peter, the older brother of Andrew, the wishy-washy, boisterous weakling that Jesus named Rocky, (laughs) invites us to consider ourselves as living stones, how ironic, how fitting. 
Peter calls each of us living stones. And as he had lived into his identity, Christ-given identity as the rock, he began to realize that there was a lot more to being a rock than just being the strong individual. I suppose he went through a stage when he thought that was what it was all about. I'm the rock. I've got responsibilities. I've got things to do. I'm in charge. But by the time he got around to writing this beautiful letter, I think rock had taken on a new meaning for him. What it is to be a living stone. The greatest significance of living stones, according to his visualization, is that we can be built together into something that is far greater than the sum of our parts. Something about us, something about Christ in us, that makes us living stones. And our life is not just within us, but it is derived from our connections with each other, from our relationships with each other. And you know what? We have experienced that. We are experiencing that. That is what's happening even right now. We saw it happening in the preparation for this service. We've seen it again and again, and Gwen has been the catalyst for this coming together of a spiritual temple made of living stones enlivened by the Holy Spirit through the grace of our infinitely patient Savior, Jesus Christ. For those of us in the Anglican tradition, I want to give this visualization. From now on, every time we pray the great thanksgiving and we bless God for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for his inestimable love in the redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Every time we say that phrase, for the means of grace, I hope that Gwen's face will pass through your mind because that is what she was and that is what she is and what she will always be for us who knew her, a means of grace, a means through which God accomplishes what he cannot do any other way and what we certainly can never do on our own. A means of grace through which God's work in us will continue unabated, perhaps accelerated because of where she is and where she stands now. Until that day when our faith becomes sight and we join her in the fullness of joy and love and light in the presence of our Savior. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together Gwen's baby song, a song that Heather began singing to her in the womb and became a part of her life from this point on.
sister Gwen, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Gwen and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister is washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrow at death, the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Gwen, who through faith in you and baptism was reborn by water and the Spirit, Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Please stand. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Your sorrow and pain are no more. Give us time for life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth we shall return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant and your saints, for sorrow and pain are no more. You are the sign of the life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Gwen. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech thee, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. until the family has gone out and you'll have ample time to greet them during our fellowship time together. And now the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.